Have you ever wondered how the world plunged into the deadliest conflict in human history, the Second World War? In the aftermath of the First World War, the seeds of a second, even more catastrophic conflict were sown. The Treaty of Versailles, signed in June of 1919, aimed to ensure peace, but ironically it did quite the opposite. The punitive reparations and territorial losses imposed on Germany stirred a deep sense of resentment, setting the stage for a wave of nationalism and the rise of Adolf Hitler. Meanwhile, the world was grappling with the Great Depression of the 1930s. Global economies were in free fall, unemployment soared, and societies around the world were thrust into turmoil. The economic crisis fanned the flames of extremism as people desperate for solutions turned to radical ideologies. In Italy, Benito Mussolini's fascist party exploited this crisis, promising stability and revival. Similarly, in Germany, Hitler's Nazi party capitalized on the economic chaos and the German people's dissatisfaction with the Treaty of Versailles. Propagating a doctrine of racial superiority and territorial expansion, Hitler won the hearts of a beleaguered population, paving the way for his totalitarian regime. The culmination of these factors led to a surge in aggressive foreign policies. Hitler, defying the Treaty of Versailles, began to rearm Germany and annex neighboring territories. The world watched uneasily, but it was the invasion of Poland in September of 1939 that finally lit the fuse. Ignoring international pleas for restraint, Germany, under the banner of Lebensraum or Living Space, invaded Poland. This act of aggression, a clear violation of Poland's sovereignty, was the final straw. Britain and France, committed to maintaining the balance of power in Europe, declared war on Germany, marking the beginning of the Second World War. As the world watched in disbelief, Germany's invasion of Poland marked the beginning of a devastating global conflict. The early years of the war saw a series of swift and brutal conquests by the Axis powers. This period, from 1939 to 1941, was marked by a new kind of warfare, the Blitzkrieg, or Lightning War, introduced by Germany. This tactic was characterized by sudden, concentrated attacks intended to create a state of shock and disarray among enemy forces. It was a strategy designed to achieve rapid victories, minimizing casualties on the German side while maximizing the impact on the opposition. The Blitzkrieg was first used with devastating effect in Poland, and later in the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Then came the fall of France in June 1940. The mighty French army and the formidable Maginot Line were thought to be almost impregnable. Yet they fell in just six weeks, leaving Britain as the last standing bastion against the Axis powers in Western Europe. The Battle of Britain was a pivotal moment in the war. Despite being heavily outnumbered, the Royal Air Force valiantly defended the skies over Britain. The few, as Winston Churchill called them, held the line against the German Luftwaffe, preventing a full-scale invasion. Meanwhile, the war was expanding. In Africa, Axis and Allied forces clashed in vast desert battles. By 1941, the conflict had also spread to the Eastern Front with Germany's surprise invasion of the Soviet Union. This decision would come to have enormous implications, setting the stage for some of the most brutal fighting of the entire war. While the Axis powers seemed unstoppable, a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor was about to change the course of the war. 1942 marked a turning point in the war as the Allies began to push back against the Axis powers. It was a year of pivotal battles, strategic shifts, and the increased involvement of the United States, signaling a change in the tide of World War II. In the chill of winter, the Battle of Stalingrad raged on. The city was a symbolic stronghold for both sides, and neither was willing to back down. After months of grueling combat, the Soviet Union emerged victorious, dealing a significant blow to the German forces. The battle was one of the deadliest in history and marked the beginning of the end for the Axis in the Eastern Front. Meanwhile, in the sun-baked deserts of North Africa, another campaign was unfolding. The North Africa Campaign, or Desert War as it was commonly known, saw the Allies and Axis vying for control of vital resources and strategic locations. The Allies, led by the British Eighth Army and later joined by American forces, ultimately pushed the Axis out of Africa, setting the stage for an invasion of Italy. Far across the Pacific, the Battle of Midway unfolded. The United States and Japan clashed in one of the most decisive naval battles of the war. 
the United States emerged victorious, turning the tide in the Pacific and putting Japan on the defensive for the rest of the war. As the Axis powers were being pushed back on multiple fronts, a new alliance was forming. The United Nations was established in 1942, uniting nations against the Axis powers and setting the groundwork for a post-war world. The United States, previously hesitant to dive headlong into the conflict, now committed fully to the Allied cause, providing much-needed resources and manpower. The tide was turning, but the road to victory would be long and bloody. Despite the victories and alliances, the war was far from over. The Allies had gained momentum, but the Axis powers wouldn't go down without a fight. The stage was set for the final chapters of the Second World War. In the final years of the war, the Allies launched major offensives on all fronts. As the tide of war began to turn, the strategic focus shifted towards liberating Europe from Nazi control. The D-Day invasion was a monumental effort, marking the largest amphibious invasion in history. Thousands of troops stormed the beaches of Normandy, France in June of 1944. The invasion marked the beginning of the end for Hitler's reign, as the Allies began to reclaim occupied territory. As the summer wore on, the Allies continued their relentless push forward. By August, they had liberated Paris, a symbolic victory that marked a major turning point in the war. The City of Light, which had been under Nazi control for four years, was finally free. But the road to victory was not without its obstacles. In the winter of 1944, the Germans launched a desperate counteroffensive in the Ardennes Forest, in what would become known as the Battle of the Bulge. Despite initial successes, the German forces were ultimately pushed back, effectively marking their last major offensive of the war. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, the Soviet Union was making significant strides. They advanced into Germany, further tightening the noose around Hitler's Third Reich. The Red Army's relentless push westward brought them to the doorstep of Berlin by early 1945. In the midst of these military developments, the political leaders of the Allies met at the Yalta Conference in February of 1945. They made the pivotal decision to divide Germany into four zones of occupation after the war, a resolution that would shape the post-war world. As the Allies closed in, the war in Europe was nearing its end. The victories of 1944 and early 1945 set the stage for the final push towards Berlin and the ultimate downfall of the Nazi regime. The end was in sight, but the final chapter of World War II was yet to be written. The final months of the war saw unprecedented destruction and a new era in global politics. The fall of Berlin was a pivotal moment, a symbol of Nazi Germany's crumbling strength. The city was besieged, its once proud structures reduced to ruins. In the midst of this chaos, Adolf Hitler, the man who had instigated so much of the world's turmoil, chose to end his own life rather than face the consequences of his actions. Within days of Hitler's death, Germany surrendered unconditionally. The war in Europe was over, but the Pacific theater was still ablaze. It took the unimaginable power of two atomic bombs, dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, to bring the war to its final, devastating conclusion. Japan, much like Germany, surrendered unconditionally, bringing an end to the most widespread war in human history. But the end of the war was just the beginning of a new era. The world had changed irrevocably, marked by the scars of battle and the memories of those who had fought and died. The wartime alliances began to crumble, replaced by a new global tension that we now know as the Cold War. The world was divided between two superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, each with its sphere of influence, each with its own ideology. This division led to the formation of two military alliances, NATO and the Warsaw Pact. NATO, or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, was formed by Western nations under the leadership of the United States. The Warsaw Pact, on the other hand, was a response from the Soviet Union and its Eastern European allies. These alliances were a clear indication of the fractures that the Second World War had left on the world stage. The Second World War changed the world in ways that still resonate today. The Second World War was a conflict of unprecedented scale and devastation. From the early sparks of aggression to the final surrender, it was a saga of power, strategy, and human courage. It was a war that redefined boundaries, cost millions of lives, and left a lasting impact on the world. The lessons learned about the high price of global conflict and the necessity of peace remain ever relevant. 
The memories of this war serve as a stark reminder of the horrors of global conflict and the importance of striving for peace.